What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Gio, and this is week 11 of season 8 of The Locker Room. We are team building for the San Diego Gym Chargers and their coach, MV. Uh, second time we've matched up against each other this season. We got a lot to talk about, guys. We honestly do. And that's largely because of the playoff picture. Uh, I don't want to go into the specifics of numbers and math of what what can happen and what needs to happen because essentially the outcome of this week matters more or less depending on a win or loss from opponents this week and next week and it's it's too much to go into <laughs> and so let's just say if i lose there is only i believe one scenario in which i can go through to the playoffs still and it involves Joey losing twice, and if I win, I can make it to the playoffs in three different scenarios. So we gotta, we gotta wait and see what happens, but if you want more info on the playoff picture, check out the GBA channel's playoff picture show, which goes up on, I think it's Thursdays, but I don't, I don't fully remember. I'm sorry guys, I, sometimes I mix up which shows release on which days. So let's talk instead about this week and the mind games that are going to go into this week. So I want to start by addressing something. I've been getting quite a few messages, both from coaches and fellow coaches and from fans. And so I need, I feel the need to address this in a video and it's ridiculous that I, I need to do this, but I'm going to anyway. I'm getting a lot of heat for something MV said in the Discord chat that one of the Discord mods deleted part of, and not all of, to remove context entirely that made it sound like Envy was gonna throw this game to me. That is bullshit. I'm sorry, but like, not fair to me, and I'm the one dealing with the fallout of this, so I'm a little upset. Whatever Discord admin chose to do that, chose to do that. That's really unfair for me because I'm minding my own business, and now I'm getting people coming at me, throwing hate towards me, for something someone else didn't even say because of this stupid joke that got taken out of context. So here's why I understand why people might have that fear. MV is locked, MV is my friend, and if I win, my chances of going to the playoffs are quite high. So I get that there's a reason that MV would want me to win. But I've been in the season I've been in the league for five seasons, and I'm not about to do anything that jeopardizes my integrity or the integrity of the league. That's just bullshit. And like, I'm I'm really kind of pissed off about it. I'm I'm gonna be honest. You guys normally see me, Kawaii Geo, all like stoked and all that. But this, honestly, it's like it frustrates me because I love the coaches in this league and I love the community of the GBA. And then whenever it gets to be right around playoffs, there's so much like anger and dirt and you know what to be perfectly honest if i don't make the playoffs that's that's okay because as long as i played as well as i could for as many games as i could and i had fun games out of this i'm honestly stoked like i just love being in the gba so i don't really it's, it's okay with me so i guess the reason i'm saying all this is i'm gonna put my best foot forward here and there are lots of reasons that MV might not do that, but that doesn't mean he's throwing a game. So uh, if anyone was a privy to those conversations on the GBA Discord, I'm sorry that the admin decided to throw me under the bus like that. I'm sure he or she thought when he or she was doing that, that they were playing a joke against Envy, but it ended up causing a lot of drama and a lot of work for me to clean that, that up and so, I, I was frustrated, but I'm better now. I have calmed down. Uh, I talked to Envy about it. I told him, we're doing this, we're fighting this. And he said, he's bringing heat. And I'm sure that was a mind game, but let's go into the next part of this, uh, which is me talking about the 11 Pokemon he has here, because they're different than the 11 Mon that he had last time. And it actually does significantly change things up as regarding our matchup. Uh, you can see the six Pokemon I'm going to bring over on that side of the screen there. This week, they're going to be Mew, Shaman, Toxapex, Ditto, Mega Scizor, and Blacephalon. And his 11 Pokemon, tiered as I do, Tapu Koko, Empoleon, Mega Pinsir, Magmordar, Hurum, Amoongus, Silvalee, Gligar, Hoopa Unbound, Slowbro, and Alolan Raichu. Now, 
a couple of things have moved and the reason a couple of things have moved is because the changes he made since the last time he played him was that he dropped girder which was a no bring um fighting type is awful against the 11 pokemon i've drafted there's no way he was bringing that uh and he replaced that with Silvali. And then he dropped Incineroar, which was a really good bring against me, and replaced it with Magmordar, which is also a really good bring against me, but for a slightly different reason. Um, Magmordar is not a switch into Blacephalon. Incineroar was an amazing switch into Blacephalon. Because he no longer has Incineroar, he's going to need a different switch into Blacephalon if he thinks I'm going to bring Blacephalon. Blacephalon makes sense for me to bring because it outspeeds the Pinsir, with a Scarf, it can outspeed the Coco. If Coco doesn't want to be outsped by it, Coco can run Scarf, but then that means that it doesn't have the firepower to break through Shaman. So I don't, in this scenario, I think um, Blacephalon is a great bring for me. And so that changes the order of the Pokemon I think he's bringing because I still think he's gonna bring a fire type because Magmordar and its coverage is pretty good against me. But I think it means that he now needs to look to a different answer. So let's get into this a little bit more. Tapu Koko is gonna be brought because it's a ridiculously good tier one Pokemon, uh, sets up a lot of potential for him. It's solid, it's fun, it has the ability to go mixed, special, or uh, physical, offensive, and uh, I don't think he, he comes without it, even if he is bringing heat sets, so to speak. One of the reasons I believe he's going to do something a little different for me is twofold, and it's very significant and lent to my planning uh, a little bit here too. I cannot bring I cannot show my whole hand here. I need to play. If I don't make the playoffs, I don't make the playoffs. If I make the playoffs, but in doing so, make it that there's no chance that I could win the playoffs, then why am I even trying to make the playoffs? So building my team, I have to maintain some sets that I think can beat MV and do really well against him if I face him in the playoffs. Um, if I go through to the playoffs, there's a chance I'm either third or fourth based on what happens in the other division uh, with their wins and losses. If I go through fourth, I play against first rank, um, which right now is looking like it's potentially MB. So if I play MB for a third time this season, then I need to make sure that I haven't revealed to MV every strat I can possibly use against him. So I need to work with the team I used last time, make a few changes, and then maintain what I consider to be my optimal strategy against him for them, because that's when he's bringing his optimal strategy against me. So I don't think MV is going to bring the absolute best sets he can, both because he doesn't need this win and also because if he brings really fun fire sets and beats me with them, he's the lord that he is. So that's worth mentioning. Empoleon I have in second spot because it is a clutch Pokemon for him. He uses it a lot. He brings berries to reduce the super effective damage against it a lot. Defog rocks, but I don't know that he's going to do that. I think he's running the SD set because um, he... <laughs> We all saw it, or maybe if you didn't, I'll explain. He brought it uh, a couple of weeks ago against a, a, an opponent that I was helping him spar and uh, prep for. And it was such a fire set, and I think he really likes it. So I honestly, I honestly, I swear, I think he's bringing a Swords Dance Empoleon set this week. But, I, you know, it could be a Rocker, Stealth Rocks are, are decent against my team. They really help pressure things like the Blacephalon. Um, and I, I just, I feel like there's a, a decent chance that he brings that. Mega Pinsir is pretty good against my team. Very powerful priority. Um, Toxapex walling it is not necessarily something Toxapex can do. Uh, Scizor is sort of in the same boat. Walling it, mm, not necessarily, but a, def a decent help to having it so a lot of my team this week was built around uh, being able to very much assist in me dealing with pincer either by removing things that i need to remove in order to beat the pincer or by directly providing me the ability to not let pincer entirely sweep me so that i can come back and counter sweep it. it's a lot of countering the pincer or it's a lot of yeah counteracting the pincer not 
directly walling it or anything like that. That's very hard to do. Uh, so we've got Magmordar and Kyurem on the next row here. Magmordar, um, it's got very high special attack. My best ways of answering it, um, Magmordor has coverage for. So it has Thunderbolt. It's one of his Zemon in addition to the Coco. So Thunderinium Z, uh, it's got Thunderbolt, and that could be a big problem for Toxapex, who otherwise would be a very good switch into it. It's got dark coverage for the Mew. So if I wanted Mew to be specially defensive, that's going to be a problem for it. Uh, the dark coverage also means that Blacephalon doesn't really switch in against it. Not that I would, but you know. Uh, and then I'm, I'm bringing Shaman and Scizor, which are both weak to it. So Ditto becomes a decent switch into it. Uh, it's pretty slow, so fortunately um, a majority of my Pokemon will outspeed it. And so I'm, I need to play around that, making sure that I don't give it the opportunity to come in against something like the Toxapex. Uh, and I'll get to the Toxapex strat in a little bit, uh, why I'm not too worried about Toxapex being a risk for the Magmordar. Kyurem is a beast. He knows that Rabombi outspeeds it and that it can kill it, and so he probably is going to be looking to have a lot of ways to deal with Rabombi. I'm not bringing Rabombi because too many other of his Pokemon either wall or beat it. So um, I could bring it with U-Turn and then do a lot of scouting and just always having that answer to Kurum, but it doesn't really switch into Kurum, so I'm not going to bring the Rabombi for that reason. Kurum's got good coverage in a lot of ways but it can be easily revenged so especially by scissor so if i see the curum i really need to sit on the scissor it's very important that's one of the major things that scissor can do for me uh, is help to answer that curum as far as why i have it as high as i do have it um it's the type of pokemon that's likely to go one for one but has the potential to go two for one three for one if you're kind of like scouting around to see what it has so i need to play around certain knowledge on it Gonna have Ice Beam, because why wouldn't it? Uh, good against the Shaman. Probably gonna have Dragon Stab, because if I'm not bringing the the Rabombi, what do I have to switch into Dragon? I think it's gonna bring Earth Power, because that will help it a lot against the Toxapex. Uh, and then the last move is where he can get crazy with it, and I think Kyurem's the type of Pokemon that you can get a little crazy with, so I think, I think that's something, if Envy's looking to bring Heat, this is one of the Pokemon that can do it. The third row is sort of... Uh, well, Amoongus I think he brings because it match it matched up well against the Haxorus. I don't think I'm going to be lucky enough to be able to pull off a counter ha strat against it this time. Um, so if I try and set up against it, Amoongus Fizz Def can be a, a pretty decent way to stop me from taking that to an endgame sweep. Uh, Gligar can also do that, and he's been using Gligar a lot. Amoongus I don't think is a fire bring, I think it's a solid bring. Silvali and Gligar, I think, are fire brings for him. So, uh, Silvali can be anything, which lends itself very well to how MB plays, because he um, does a great job of looking and appearing unexpected with some of what he brings, and then finding core strength in other Pokemon. That's why he brings such a similar Empoleon set every week, because what are you going to do against it? Like, you can hit it with a super effective attack, and it's gonna take it, especially if it's got that, uh, if it's got a berry for it. And it's gonna do what it's gonna do. It's gonna win the Rock War, and he's got, you know, the Coco, which is solid and can, and can be solid there. And then he can really play around with things based on what he thinks you're gonna bring, and being that unpredictable can be problematic. So that's why I think Silvali is a good bring for him. Uh, its move pool is decent. It's got access to parting shot it can be any type it wants to be so it could be a very it could be a dark type to try and take on blacephalon and mew or it, like it's a lot of things it could do uh, but it's not super powerful and it's not super bulky so it's that's why i have it lower than the, i think like the potential for it to be brought is relatively high but I don't know that its effect on my team is high enough to put it at tier 2, so I have it tier 3. And then Gligar, same same idea, like, um, it can be a very good answer to Haxorus, it can be a decent switch into Scizor, it, it can be very bulky, 
it is a uh, a pre-evolution of Gliscor, so it can be an SD set. Uh, I guess we'll have to with with Gligar, you gotta you gotta put forth against it what you've got. So I've got a lot that can hit it super effective or take advantage of it because I kind of need to. It's the type of thing that if you don't have it, it can wall you very well. So I don't want to be hard walled by it. Uh, then we've got Hoopa Unbound. Uh, my team is too U-turn happy and he saw that I prepped for it very heavily with a lot of U-turn last time. So I don't think he brings it. It's a dark type and dark types can be problematic for my team because I don't really have dark type resists. But I... It's slow enough that a lot of my Pokemon outspeed it. If it locks itself in to, su to the wrong move, it does lend the possibility to allow setup in other ways, so I don't think it'll be scarfed. It, it's uh, another one-for-one -one risk mon for him, and I don't think he wants to do that. That's not the type of game that MB plays. Uh, last two mon, Slowbro. There's too many things on my team that directly threaten it. Last time I played against him, I had Chestnut on my team. This time I have Shaman. Shaman is just way too good a switch in against it and I I think it's it ends up becoming more of a liability for him than a bonus and then um, the uh, Alolan Raichu again since I picked up Shaman uh, now is much much worse against my team and personally don't think it, it makes sense for him to bring it because I'm not on paper particularly weak to psychic or electric and it doesn't have super super great coverage so that's my th my theory and my uh, mindset behind his 11. Let's go into my team build. This week, we are bringing Remix the Ditto, Proto the Mega Scizor, DMX the Toxapex, Tefiti the Shaman, Home Yowner the Mew, and Head Go Boom the Blacephalon. Let's get started with DMX because his set sort of lends itself to what my overall strategy is this week. And basically that is don't allow Mega Pinsir to win. If Mega Pinsir picks up a kill, that's okay. Um, make it suffer for it. Don't let it set up and beat me, and and then we can go from there. So Rocky Helmet is there so that uh, I can get chip damage off against it as being my primary switch into his return or frustration. I have enough special attack investment that I can guaranteed break a Mega Pinsir sub. So if he's gonna try and sub and then sweep the rest of the game with me so that I can't take him on with Ditto, he'll click sub on the turn I come in, I'll scald, break the sub, and I, I just gotta play it like that. Make sure that he does not get behind a sub. I have enough defense investment to survive uh, a two hit KO from Return of Frustration. If I can get Toxic spikes up without taking too much damage on Toxapex if that situation um, presents itself. I want to get spike Toxic Spikes up so that I can get a poison on Mega Pinsir before it Mega Evolves and gains that flying typing. All of these things just to put it into a situation where Remix can handle it safely. Remix is running Quick Claw because I don't want to be locked into specific moves by some mons. Being uh, a Magmortar could be very useful. Ditto could be a pretty decent switch into Magmortar. And ha being able to switch up moves could be really useful because if I were to say lock myself into some coverage move, um, Magmortar versus Magmortar, to beat the Magmortar, I don't know what necessarily that would be. Obviously, it's not going to be his Fire Stab, so it might be Focus Blast, it might be Dark, it might be um, uh, an Electric move. Pretty much all of those are resisted by Tapu Koko, so I'm basically just giving Tapu Koko a free switch in. Uh, in that in that situation so I wouldn't want to be forced to not be able to change my moves and then quick claw would allow me to surprise him and still get off a very powerful fire stab or something like that there's just one scenario um, but there's actually a lot of that on his team being locked into one is very unfortunate for the rest uh, and he doesn't really have one mon that can sweep the rest of his team in any scenario if I'm forced to stay in with one move uh, but Mega Pinsir is still super good against Mega Pinsir and the rest of his team as long as I can switch moves. So Ditto last time was a very big Mega Pinsir check for me. I ended up losing the game against Envy largely because I didn't protect my Ditto. And basically as soon as I lost it, I kind of realized I needed to keep it. So this time I intend to do that and I intend to make it that I don't need to switch out every single time or force myself to play this 50-50 game of what I should click. So that's the reason for Ditto. 
Proto is here uh, with a uh, bulky offensive SD Roost set, Bullet Punch U-Turn. I want lots of momentum against MB this week. If he's bringing heat sets, um, I can take advantage of his, a lot of that with U-Turn. So I, I want to get my Mega Evolution up as ASAP. And the big reason for that is um, with high HP investment, Scizor can take two hits from a, a Jolly Mega Pinsir. So I need to get Mega Evolved ASAP because a regular Scizor cannot do that. So this becomes another backup for me for Scizor. Another way to break a sub if he chooses to break a sub because Remix is going to be the one that I count on to take out Pinsir. I don't really have any Pokemon that I'm super confident in being able to do that otherwise because um, the Pokemon that would have great hits for it are Blacephalon who dies to the quick attack um, or Dyson, who I'm not bringing this week. So I, I need to be able to maintain that momentum. I need to be mega uh, and I need to try and keep myself healthy as much as possible. So that's sort of the thought process behind Scizor there. We went over DMX already. Tefiti's running Expert Belt, Seed Flare, HP, Ice, Earth, Power, Psychic. That coverage is just not resisted by his team. One way or another, I got super effective for everything. I think this set is going to work really well. Of course, you're looking at that 162 speed tier again. That, of course, allows me to outspeed the Curum, who is base 95. He's got Silvali, who's also base 95. He doesn't have any base 100s. His next highest speed tier is 105, and I can't meet the I can't beat the 105 tier. However, uh, if he opts to run Adamant, uh, I'm still faster than that because an Adamant hits a highest of 157. So I'm still outspeeding Adamant Pinsir if he's gonna go that route, uh, and I'm outspeeding the uh, timid Curum and Jolly or timid Solvali also. Uh, and it's just, it's a solid amount of coverage all across the board. It's a really good switch in to the Slowbro. It's a really good switch into the Empoleon. It's a pretty decent switch into the Coco. Uh, and it's a lot of mid game pressure for me, which is sort of uh, what I will hope to accomplish from that. The last two mons are the ones I'm really excited for. I have been looking at this for a while, guys. I decided I'm going to do it this time. Uh, we've got Explosion Mew. He's got Focus Sash, he's got uh, Ice Punch, Focus Punch, Stealth Rock, and Explosion. So, I, it, this is a very similar thing to, I, to what I did last week. I didn't bring Psychic Stab on Mew because I felt that what I want to accomplish with Mew is not having a direct answer to the Amoongus, which is pretty much the only Pokemon he has that Psychic would be truly effective for. Ice Punch, Focus Punch, Explosion. My goal here is maybe get an Ice Punch off on a Gligar and, and get a kill that way. Focus Punch is there without sub, mainly because if there's something that I think won't attack, and I'm kind of looking at uh, his Stealth Rockers or <laughs> or something along those lines. I'm okay. I'm really looking at the Empoleon. If I can get up rocks and then I see Empoleon come in against me. We've had that situation occur last time we battled and I had Earthquake for it and he had a Shaka and it kind of ruined me. But if I can get up rocks and then force in the Empoleon to think it resists my stab and think it has a berry for me, uh, I got Focus Punch for it, and I really don't think he's bringing a, um, a fighting damage barrier. What is it? Is it Co- I forget which one. I forget Cobalt. No, I don't, I don't remember which one the fighting berry is, but uh, I really don't think he brings that. With the set, I have Focus Punch Oko's a, um, a max HP specially defensive one. I don't know if it, uh, if he's... If it'll Oko a physically defensive one, probably not. But, I mean, if it's gonna go off and it's gonna do that much damage, I've pretty much accomplished my, my purpose here. So, this will hopefully eliminate the Empoleon and allow me to win the Rocks War. Uh, and then Explosion is because things that can take on Mew, like it'll Oko the Coco. And so if Coco tries to just wreck me, force a switch or something like that. I could just boom against it, maybe. Um, it could also be useful against the Curum. Uh, it'll Oko the Curum. Um, 
which the focus punch obviously would be amazing for and ice punch is also super effective against but it's I don't know that it's enough and it would be nice to just remove that threat right away so looking at Mew to pressure something win the rock war for me thanks to focus punch uh, and then just boom uh, and so really Mew's goal here is to rocks and take at least one life with it in the process that's Mew's goal this week if I can get up rocks, I can heavily pressure the Magmortar and the Pinsir uh, and the Kyurem actually, and that could be huge for me. He does have some momentum grabbing. Uh, U-turn on the Gligar, U-turn Volt Switch on the Coco, and so this really assists me in that. And then we've got Head Go Boom, who also has Explosion. And this is what I kind of was like contemplating doing against um, against Jolt last week. Uh, was running double boom because uh, I don't know I think it I think it could be good flamethrower shatter ball hidden power bug explosion uh, if I if he doesn't bring the pincer then head go boom is the win con if he does the way mega pincer plays like the way I've seen MV play with it the way I have played with it when I've drafted it in the past um, you sit on it and that makes Blacephalon much less valuable and so in that circumstance, it becomes a mid gamer. Hidden power bug to take on the slow bro who resists my stab and the potentially Selvali dark or Hoopa unbound. And then flamethrower shadow ball, just potential sweeping stab options for me if he doesn't bring the pincer. And then boom, just because it's boom guys. And it's so good. So like my numbers are very random except for the 162 here. I pretty much literally just dragged and there's no significance to my, to my offensive EVs other than I want explosion. No, that's not true. I think with the offensive investment I have here, I guarantee that I boom and take out, maybe it's Coco. It's still random. I mean, like I, I know that I needed some physical investment to Oko something with boom. Um, I, I built a lot of this team yesterday and two days ago, so I don't remember exactly what that was and I didn't write it in my notes here. So I'm not 100% sure why I have some attack investment, but I know that it's not mathematically significant and I just kind of wanted a little bit of both. Uh, for powerful boom and potential for sweeping potential with the choice scarf, if I get to plus one and there's no pincer left um, or other priority, I guess. Um, we're talking about the potential for Aqua Jet, uh, Swords Dance, and Polion, so I'll have to make sure that that's safe for me. Um, but yeah, that's the team I'm looking at this week, guys. I have a couple of other sets that I think will do very well for me. If I'm fortunate enough to claim a win this week, claim a win next week, and the uh, situation that unfolds in Lars and Joey's wins and losses don't negate me from making the playoffs anyway. So. I've got a couple of things in my back pocket if we do make playoffs and if we don't make playoffs uh, we went out swinging guys we really did this is a hard match I was really hoping I would come into this exact scenario six and four against MV so I I wouldn't have to be stressing so much about this I am very stressed I'm doing my best to hold it together uh, but let me know in the comment section down below uh, if you have any other thoughts about what you thought I should have brought this week for the team. So as always, uh, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you guys tomorrow.